Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on analysis. This was in a June 2010 paper and a lot of people did struggle with it because they didn't tend to look back at AS chemistry, especially unit one. So let's have a look at it. Compound A is an orange ionic compound of chromium. So the first clue that we've got here is that it contains chromium with the percentage composition by mass of these percentage. Compound A does not have water crystallization. Then we have all this over here. Let's forget that because we're not going to go into that so far. First thing we've got to do is to calculate the empirical formula of this compound. I know there are in percentages, so let's imagine that compound A weighed 100 grams. So for each 100 grams of compound A, nitrogen is 11.11 grams. Hydrogen is 3.17 grams, chromium is 41.27 grams, and oxygen is 44.45 grams. Just because they are in percentages, we would use we would make the whole compound out of 100 grams. And as you can see here, if we add them all up together, it all makes 100 grams. Now to calculate the empirical formula, what we've got to do is to divide this mass by the MR, or the atomic rate, um, the atomic mass actually. So, if we look on the periodic table, nitrogen is over here, nitrogen is 14. So we're going to write that here, 14. Hydrogen is 1, we should remember that. Chromium, if we look on the periodic table, it is... 51, SA52, because it's 51.996, so it'll be 52. And just go what, with whatever it says on the OCR data sheet. Obviously, I'm using ptable.com, so it's going to be more accurate. But oxygen is obviously 16. So if we divide them, if we divide them each by turn, we would get uh, 0 0.793 to 3.17 to 0 0.794 to 2.78 okay so what i've done here i've divided 11.11 by 14 to make this 3.17 by 1 to make that 41.27 divided by 52 to make that and so on so we've got all these ratios now but these are really unfriendly numbers so what we need to do we need to make one of them one we need we need the smallest number to basically be one and what we do we look at the smallest number and we divide by it we divide all of it by the smallest number so we're going to divide all of this by 0 0.793 i don't know why i did that divided by 0 0.793 divided by 0 0.793 divided by 0 0.793 and each in turn makes uh makes one i know um if we do it on the calculator it does it does come up with something so if you do yeah that becomes one and 3.17 divided by 0 0.793 that makes 3.99 but that is really close to four so we can write four there the same thing here this would make uh, 0 0.794 divided by 0 0.793 and that would make 1.0012 so technically it should be 1 and this if we divide it it is very close to 3.5 and that's important that you don't round up numbers which are f well which are in the middle basically if we have 3.7 I would suggest that you don't you don't round it up I would suggest that it's mainly because you might mess everything up but obviously we can't have 3.5 moles of oxygen so what we need to do we need to multiply this all by 2 to make this a whole number so that becomes 7 that become 2 that become 8 and that become 2 and so the empirical formula therefore is n2 h8 CR2 O7. Okay, these numbers just go on the subscript. So the 8 goes over here, 
the 2 goes over here and the 7 goes over there. Obviously, you might have noticed that we've got a chromate ion over here, which is going to be very important uh, in the next question where it asks you to identify the ion. So, well, there you go. Also, N2H8, it would be easier if we just wrote it as NH4 2 Cr2 O7. It looks much better like that. And that is that is a proper way of writing it anyway. So, the next thing we need to uh, do is to deduce the ions that make up the, ion the ionic compound A. And as we've written, it would be NH4 and Cr2O7. Obviously, they are ions, so you need to put the ionic charges. If you wrote this and kept it like that, N2H8 plus is definitely not an ion and you will not be accepted in the mark scheme so if I were you I would try and think what can I make from N2H8 which looks familiar NH4 to Cr2O7 obviously the chromate ion is a 2 minus because we have two pluses here so what we need to do now the next question is identify substances B and C so if we do it by deduction, what we've got left, we have got nitrogen ions left, we've got hydrogen ions, and we've got uh, oxygen atoms as well. Obviously, it makes water, so we've got H2O. Uh, that's, a little, that's a little giveaway, that's a little tip. So, the proper way to do it without elimination, to look for B, is to actually read the question first. <laughs> So, it says here, B is a green oxide, so obviously it's changed oxidation states, and that's really important. If it's changed colours, it's probably changed oxidation states, and the molar mass is 152.0 grams per mole. But next thing you need to remember, that all the chromium is going to be in this compound, okay? Because over here, we have C, which is a gas, and it doesn't mention anything of chromium here. So, chromium is going to be in compound B and as you can see here in the empirical formula we have got two moles of we got two atoms of chromium so bearing that in mind we need to find the MR of Cr2 and the MR of Cr2 is where is it where is it Cr there we go which is 52 Okay, it's 51.999961. But it'll be 52, and we times that by 2 to make 104. Now, the question tells us that the molar mass is 152 grams per mole. So, obviously, what we've got left is 152 minus 104 to make 48. Now, the other clue, it says that it is an oxide so obviously it's going to contain oxygen atoms now how many oxygen atoms can we have which will have the MR of 48 if each one is 16 we can fit three of them in to make 48 so therefore this would be compound B would be Cr2O3 and just to double check that the ions are correct Cr2 would be uh, would have an oxidation state of plus 3, okay, because it's now green. So if it has an oxidation state of plus 3, two of these chromiums will be plus 6. And obviously, oxygen's 2 minus, there's three of them, that'll be minus 6, so this is neutral. We're fine here. So that is the second one. And the third one is a bit tricky, actually. The third one took, took a lot of thinking about, but it tells us that each decimeter cube we have 1.17 of it so if you think about it for every decimeter cubed we have 1.17 grams of this compound C now you need to ask the question you need to refer back to AS chemistry how many Decimeters cubed, do we need to fill up 
one mold to make one mold okay and you on you you might be thinking huh what's that got to do with anything but if you remember the equation n equals v over 24 what we need to do is forget about that don't need to worry about that so far but we need to find out how many grams there are in 24 decimeter cubed because in every 24 decimeter cubed that would make one mole and you do the if yeah just go back over your as chemistry so we need to times this by 24 and that would make 28 i think 28.08 hold on i'm going to just double check that that is going to be 1.17 times uh 24 28.08 correct so now we know for every mole of this compound, we have 28.08 grams. So we have 28.08 grams for every mole we have. And obviously, this is the atomic mass. If you think about it, okay, you think about it because this this is this is a pretty difficult concept to come by but if we if i say if you remember it one mole of gas occupies 24 decimeters cubed at room temperature and pressure and the question told us for every decimeter cubed we have 1.17 so for every one decimeter cubed we have 1.17 so for every 24 decimeter cubed we have this mass over here and this mass is for every mole that we have. So, if we look on the periodic table, well, we don't even need to look at the periodic table. If we do, if we do by elimination, we know that we have water. We know that we have the chromium ions. I know it's a bit messy, but the only things that we've got left is nitrogen. <laughs> and so, well, therefore, it just has to be nitrogen. So it's going to be n2 basically because if you think about it 14 times 2 because 14 is here over here 14 times 2 that makes 28 and that's a fitting description of compound c so the last thing we've got to do is just to tidy it up and to write everything down neatly so we know we have compound a and compound a is nh4 uh, two CR two O seven, and that decomposes to CR two O three, which was our compound B, plus N two, which was our compound C, plus whatever's remaining. And obviously, it says water, so it's got to be H two O. But we need to figure out how many um, hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms we've got left. So we've got eight hydrogen atoms so obviously it, it technically should just be four but let's just double check we have three we have four which makes seven and obviously we've got seven here so that means this is all balanced if you have any questions please don't hesitate to comment before my tuesday exam if you comment after that i might not do it but yes but there you go that is it